Ladies, if you have ever had issues falling asleep or staying asleep, this video is for you. I am going to talk about three ways that your hormones affect your sleep. I'm going to talk about the why, why it happens and what to do about it. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Tina Hoppert. I am the woman behind the carrots and cake brand. Carrots and cake is all about having your carrots and cake too. So living a healthy, well-balanced lifestyle while also having a lot of fun because life is too long to miss out on the good stuff. On my YouTube channel, you will hear about nutrition and fitness and macros and hormones and minerals and gut health and so much more. So be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop about all of my new content and videos. So before I jump into the reasons why your hormones might be affecting your sleep, I wanted to share a little bit of my story because I've definitely struggled with insomnia from time to time. And I can absolutely relate it back to certain things going on in my life. Obviously, hormonal imbalances without a doubt was contributing to my sleepless nights. I'll get into more detail about that. But my stress, I think my stress was the biggest factor keeping me awake at night. So I'm going to give you guys a bonus tip at the end of this with what really made a difference for me in addition to balancing my hormones. So the first way that your hormones can wreck your sleep is having high cortisol. So stress, <laughs> it's in our lives every day. And I think a lot of us are living under this kind of chronic stress umbrella. And cortisol is not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually anti-inflammatory. It can be really helpful when we encounter a stressful situation. So. You know, if we're running from a lion or we got in a car accident or we're about to give a speech in front of a big group of people, our cortisol is going to raise up. That is great. It gives us energy. It gives us adrenaline. Cortisol is not necessarily a bad thing, but the issue with it is that living our lives every single day with all the di different demands of our lives. I just think about moms who work full time, who are trying to stay healthy and do all the things. Our stress is constantly elevated. We are just living under chronic stress. And if your stress is elevated and you are kind of stressed out all the time, it's going to make sense that you're going to have trouble sleeping. And so this is what I see again and again with my clients is that when they have this high cortisol, our stress hormone, it's really hard for them to wind down at bedtime. They're almost like wired and tired. Like they're tired. They know they're tired. They know they can go to, they need to go to sleep, but then they're laying in bed, tossing and turning, their brains running a million miles per minute, and they just can't shut it off. And that is 100% your cortisol just being a little bit out of whack, um, probably a little bit too high at night. And it makes sense. If cortisol is the thing that gives you that energy, you're not going to be able to sleep. One more thing to add about cortisol, just because it goes hand in hand with low blood sugar. And if you're somebody that wakes up in the middle of the night, it could be because of low blood sugar. So let me, let me explain all this. So, um, if you had watched my video about why I quit orange theory, I shared a personal story about how all that overtraining was causing these low blood sugar issues in the middle of the night. And I was waking up. So what would happen is I would go to bed, my blood sugar would crash, and then I would end up waking up anywhere between one and three in the morning with low blood sugar. And when you wake up at that hour, <laughs> so oftentimes you wake up kind of anxious. You end up being like a little bit wide awake. I was so wide awake that I felt like I could start my day at that hour, which obviously I don't recommend. You should be sleeping between one and three in the morning. But basically what happens is when your blood sugar gets low, your glucose raises to bring your blood sugar up to a normal level. And then to even that out or to counter that, your cortisol kicks on. And that's why you wake up. Um, essentially your cortisol, you know, gets your butt out of bed. And in the morning when you want to wake up, that makes perfect sense. Like you want your body to have this cortisol awakening response to get your butt out of bed, to give you energy, to get you going. You don't want that to happen in the middle of the night. So what to do is when you are eating your dinner the night before, make sure it is a well-rounded meal with protein, 
carbs, with fiber and fat, because that is going to keep your blood sugar steady throughout the night. So another way that your hormones could be affecting your sleep is low progesterone. So for you ladies in your 30s, 40s, 50s, as we get older, our progesterone levels are going to start to decline. It's a normal part of aging. It's not the best because progesterone is a very calming hormone. It can make us sleepy. And if you have low levels of progesterone, you could have issues with sleep, falling asleep, staying asleep. You can have issues with anxiety, weight gain, low libido, inflammation, slow metabolism. There are so many things that go along with having low progesterone. Also, if you are somebody who is super duper stressed, maybe you've been overtraining, under eating, you've been on the pill or an IUD, you're probably somebody who is suffering from low progesterone too. So if any of this resonates with you, um, low progesterone could absolutely be contributing to your sleep issues. So what to do for low progesterone? So for most of the women we work with, it comes down to reducing stress. So looking at their life, looking at their lifestyle, and figuring out how they can manage their mental, emotional stress, but also their physical stress, which goes down to exercise. If you are overtraining, taking a look at your fitness routine and making sure you're not stressing out your body too much. Um, and then perhaps increasing your caloric intake to make sure you are eating enough to meet your energy needs um, because under eating is really stressful on the body. Also important is making sure you're eating enough healthy fats. Um, cholesterol is needed in order to make hormones, especially your sex hormones like progesterone. So so getting good sources of meat and fish and eggs and dairy and all that good stuff um, and really just nourishing your body. Um, seed cycling can be helpful. I will be sure to do a video on seed cycling. I love seed cycling, but that is a good way to naturally balance your hormones. And then the final way that your hormones could be messing with your sleep is having low melatonin. Actually, high melatonin could be messing with your sleep too. It actually can make you feel sleepy during the day. But anyways, melatonin is a hormone, is our sleepy time hormone, and 80% of it is made in the gut. So if you have any sort of chronic gut issues, whether it's constipation, IBS, more loose bowels, um, it could, could, could be contributing to that low melatonin. And really, if you have chronic gut issues, it could take a little bit of trial and error, maybe a little bit of exploration as far as testing, stool testing, things like that. And then of course, you know, looking at your diet, making sure you're eating whole foods, you're eating enough fiber, you're eating enough prebiotic foods, you're staying away from processed foods and fake sugars and chemicals and stuff like that. But taking a look at your diet could help improve your overall gut health. Okay, so the bonus tip that I'm going to give you unrelated to hormones has to do with most of us having a lack of a bedtime routine. And I think this makes all of a difference. And honestly, before you <laughs> skip ahead or close out this video, hear me out. So I was just talking about stress. We are all stressed. We're running around like lunatics all day long, like chickens with our heads cut off. And then we get to bedtime and we're like, okay, body, it's time to sleep. And oftentimes we are still amped up. Our brains are running a million miles a minute. We're running to-do lists through our head over and over again. So it makes sense that we might have sleep issues, obviously falling asleep, but like if your brain subconsciously is still running, 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 you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night. And so the example I often give my clients is, you know, many of them are moms, they have little kids. Um, so, you know, a, a toddler or, I mean, we have an eight year old and we still do a bedtime routine with them, but think about all the things that you do with your kids to get them ready to go to sleep. So for us, oftentimes it's having a bath. We might do a little bit of lotion and PJs and we read books and then we have snuggles, lights out. And then finally, you know, our kids go to sleep. <laughs> So we are just like them. Like we need some sort of routine to help us wind down so we can get a full night's sleep. So personally, this is just an example of my bedtime routine. And I do this most nights, not every night. A lot of times I will have a snack before bed, something with protein, carbs, and fat, because I do find that if I eat something 
right before I go to bed, maybe like an hour before I go to bed, I do sleep better and I sleep through the night. Um, we do eat pretty early in our house. We'll eat anywhere between five and 5.30. So if I'm not going to bed till nine or later, um, yeah, a snack can help keep my blood sugar more balanced. Um, a lot of times I will take a hot shower. I'll get into my PJs. I'll do my face routine with all my products and everything. Um, sometimes I'll go downstairs and watch a little bit of TV, but I really try to to avoid blue light um, like two-ish hours before bed. I try not to scroll on my phone. I used to do that a lot. Um, and since I stopped doing that, my sleep has been a lot better. And then typically I will journal or I'll read a little bit. And honestly, at that point, I'm pretty tired and then I fall right to sleep. Um, so that's an example of my routine. Obviously it's finding what works best for you, um, but anything you can do to help calm your body, to wind it down um, can really help you fall asleep and stay asleep. So don't skip the bedtime routine. It's very, very important. One more thing to add to my nighttime routine that I forgot to mention, but I think it's important. And I do get this question all the time about supplements. So I really like magnesium. It can be very, very calming on the body. So there's two ways that I personally use it. And a lot of my clients do too. One is a lotion. So I take a shower at night and when I get out, I put lotion on my arms and my legs and it's a magnesium lotion. So I'll be sure to include a link. You can grab it right from Amazon, um, but you can absorb magnesium right through the skin. It's a really, really easy way to get it into your body and help you with sleep. Um, and also you can get magnesium in a powder form, a capsule form. I like magnesium glycinate. I feel like most people tolerate it well, it's well absorbed. Um, and I'll be sure to link to my online dispensary if you want to grab some. It is a great product. Everybody's deficient in magnesium. Um, and if you are somebody that struggles with sleep and anxiety, could be because you're a little bit deficient on the magnesium. So if this video is speaking to you, you feel like you have some sort of hormonal imbalance and you're struggling with sleep, I have a freebie that can help you balance your hormones naturally. So it is called Six Signs of Hormonal Weight Gain and What to Do About It. And it's a great resource. It's totally free. It's 16 pages long, it tells you about some of the signs of hormonal weight gain and exactly what to do about it as far as what to eat, what to do. There's a three day meal plan in there with recipes that can help get you going as far as balancing your hormones and feeling better. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please take a second to like this video. It helps other women who are struggling with hormone issues find these videos. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel because I will definitely be more videos coming out related to hormones. I love hormones. I love hormonal health um, and you don't want to miss them.